the ongoing demonstrations are causing great risk to economic activities, including collection of revenue, the impacting on the tourism sector, and disruption in businesses. I saw a comment by one of the Gen Z's that was actually equating our national budget to our own family budget. And if you have only 10,000 Kenya shillings and you need to do food, uh, buy food and buy shoes, you can't do shoes and then leave uh, food. But the way we have been budgeting is actually the opposite. We are buying shoes and leaving food. And when we do that, then there is pressure for us to increase revenue and hence the finance uh, in famous finance bill. So for me it's very important that we are more realistic because we create an artificial need uh, for revenue where we can actually budget as a country within our means. I know we have uh, blamed the IMFs and all and I'm sure they are doing wrong. Uh, but first let us point fingers at ourselves before we point fingers even at the IMF because there are things we can do at home that don't need to put those kind of pressure on us. Chair, the only thing, uh, other thing I wanted to indicate uh, is that I've seen that uh, the Treasury has indicated areas where they need the cuts but without uh, premising them on certain principles and that's why Dr. Tari is actually going back to leave this, leave this or that. If you want to be very fair, it's always good to move on principles. And for me, one, which I've again said several in this committee, is, is there equity? One, in the cuts. And secondly, not only just in the cuts, but in the spreading out of the little, since you are going on austerity measures. And the chair, I don't want to be selfish, but this is a very skeletal document which uh, and if with the documents that we have on cards here, yeah, they are about, about uh, from page one to page uh, nine. Yeah? If you are looking at uh, the estimates, the printed estimates, they are like this voluminous, they are that big. What is the possibility that two projects in my constituency, for instance, would be here? That shows lack of equity. I don't mind programs in my constituency being removed for us to deal with issues of austerity now, but there must be equity, both in cuts and also in spreading out what is remaining. Secondly, we must look at or preserve the Pro People project, the one that reaches people directly, especially Gen Z's in terms of job creation but also in terms of training. So if you are removing the ones that are reaching them, but we are retaining some which may not have that sort of value, it doesn't help. Then third, um, projects that can stimulate the economy. And uh, chair, for instance, there are some construction, there are ongoing constructions which we don't need. I know there are many we've removed, but there are some that I've actually seen that are there. Again, consolidating roles is another. Unfortunately, one of the areas I've seen is an area I'm very passionate about, so I will not say it, I will not mention it, but it's an area I'm very passionate about. But they have three different agencies doing one thing. It's a lot of wastage. And if you are serious, and that's what part of the conditionalities I think that IMF has given us, but we are going round and round like we are not able to. Again, chair the issue of public participation, because we went to the public, they told us what, where the shoe is pinching. Let's not re remove that. And finally, Chair, uh, on a light note, I can, uh, um, uh, we, you have told us that the demonstrations are keeping tourists away. But I actually think it's uh, the opposite. If we can actually do away with the police beating demonstrators and the goons that are somehow infused, why? Because Ugandans will come here, Nigerians will come to see our Gen Z's are actually demonstrating with style, you know. They are good, they dance, they do uh, no peaceful, no distraction, so we can actually use it to bring more. 
more worries. So just be nice to the Gen Z. Thank you, Chair.